All right, guys, we're going to start now. We're a little ahead of schedule, so um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a little filler for the next 20 minutes. Uh, this is uh, basically uh, my conservation programs I run at Austin Water. So um, we got that. We got that up. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is real quick. I just uh, I did this last year and. Uh, we had some comments on it, so I tried to do a little research, and uh, so I was wanting, wanting to go ahead and just give you an update on that. And plus, we have a brand new program that just started this year. I know a lot of you are on the, in the landscaping uh, field, so if you can pass this along to your residential customers, uh, that'd be great. So uh, I currently administer the WaterWise Landscape Rebate Program. And what we're doing is we up that we up the amount. It's a lot of work. A lot of people that have clients that um, want to go through this program, they uh, <clears throat> they usually complain that we're not giving enough incentive. Uh, believe me, I've tried uh, to my heart's content to try to get that um, um, number up. Uh, it's kind of hard it, it, to see uh, places like California giving one two dollars a, a square foot. And uh, all we're giving is 35 cents a square foot, but uh, you know this is we upped it. It was 25 cents a square foot for. Uh, well, actually, we do it in 100 square foot increments, so it's 35 dollars for every 100 square feet that you convert. You take out your turf grass, and you put in native plant beds. Um, there is no turf to turf replacement. I always get those questions. Uh, I'm going to be putting in habit turf. I'm taking out my St. Augustine. Uh, what we've realized is that uh, people, um, their watering habits don't change. They still try to water the habit turf as much as they did the St. Augustine. So we can't really incentivize that. Um, we are still working on education. So hopefully one day I will be able to come up with some kind of program like that. But until then, uh, we, we can't incentivize it. Uh, eligibility, of course. There's people that live out in uh, uh, bee caves that try to get into this program. It's only for Austin Water customers or people that are in qualifying water providers. Usually those are the ones that are buying Austin Water in bulk. Um, what do we have? Um, basically, um, you know, I think Shady Hollow and places like that, um, that you, they will know exactly. We have a, a website that has a list of qualifying water uh, providers, and uh, you can definitely take advantage of that if you live in one of those. The uh, <clears throat> all you have to do is just uh, basically get a. This is a pre-approval process. I always get people saying, "I did this two years ago." Um, well, I'm I'm glad you did. I'm sorry that you didn't get into the program, um, but it's there's always a couple that that. that call me every year and say that they did it you know, five years ago or something like that. Uh, the conversion area has to be at least 500 square feet minimum. The reason for this is because uh, we're trying to measure water savings and it's very hard when somebody just does 100 square feet and you don't really see that water savings on the, because we take um, our information from the water meter reads. Um, but um, projected, you know, of course, you can always project that they're saving water, but we want to have real-time data, and we don't have smart meters yet. There's a push for smart meters to be going into uh, new uh, residential homes. We hope that that um, progresses forward so that we will have the ability to sort of uh, look at these uh, water savings in real time. But in, uh, we, we, there's no push for retrofitting old meters. That would be so expensive. I, I can't even come up with a, a number on that. Um, like I said, you can't have started work uh, before. Um, and of course, your uh, turf grass has to be in good health. Now, what I ended up doing is there was a 75% healthy uh, grass rule. I went ahead and changed that. Uh, because of the drought, uh, not that many people um, were really um, having um, that 75% health. All I want to see is that there are there is a lawn that you're actually taking care of. If it's gone dormant, I want to see that it's dormant. You you can get into the program. Yes. Why is that? 
Well, it's it's because um, if you look at the the photo I just put up there, um, there are people that are getting trying to get into the program that have dead uh, dead lawns, and uh, we don't see any water savings. We're actually seeing water spending. Um, because what they're doing is they're t they're taking out their weeds or and dirt and they're they're actually putting in landscapes that they're using more water for. So this is basically an incentive program. It's not a, it's it's just for people that are tired of trying to maintain their their lawns. Yeah. Right, they've been saving lots of water for two years, and now it's it, it basically. Right, right. No, it, it, it's it's not oh, that type of that type of yard. If with with. If there were sections of the yard that were were healthy, um, then that those areas would be el eligible. But for dead areas, mainly weeds and dirt, they're not going to be able to get into the program. They might qualify for another program that I'll be talking about uh, later on. Um, okay, so those are just photos there of what we're looking at. Fifty percent, uh, like I said, there's there's some sunburn areas. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let them into the program as long as I know that they're, you know, at least trying to uh, maintain their, their lawn. Uh, basically, this, what we're trying to do is um, educate the public that, you know, you can maintain your lawn without having to have all this turf grass in, in, on the site. Uh, we're asking uh, to add one inch compost to a minimum of a six inch tilled soil. We're not, we, there was a requirement in this program a long time ago to add soil. We're just asking them to, uh, to till in compost into the soil. Now, there's some areas in town that won't have six inches of soil. We just ask that they try their best to put in some kind of compost. And of course, around tree, um, and the, the tree roots, we don't want you to, to, to till up those areas, so outside of the, the drip lines of trees. Uh, the plants must be from the Grow Green Plant Guide or um, anything that's um, basically um, drought, drought tolerant. Um, not all the plants in the Grow Green Guide are, are um, low to very low water use. I understand that, but um, there are exceptions, and I can go ahead and approve those exceptions, like 5% uh, annuals. Some people, they, they, they have to have their annuals. As long as they're not putting it all over their, their yard, I'm going to allow that as far as... Uh, um, in their in their plant beds, um, of course, the mulch uh, is, is a requirement. And then last year we had a great discussion on weed barrier fabric. Uh, there was talk that there um, we should remove that requirement in this program. And uh, after lots of discussions, we went ahead and kept that requirement in. Uh, we just don't want that um, grass to take over. And there was the argument against it was, um, well. What happens is the mulch decomposes. It sort of uh, forms a soil on top of the fabric, and then you have weeds growing on top of that. Well, there that we we looked at that, and we looked at that as being basically just poor maintenance on that part. And so, we are still requiring the weed barrier fabric to um, there. And we're not talking about the the plastic tarp or anything like that. We're talking about fabric that allows the water to get through into the roots. So basically, yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, the comment was that uh, they they have used uh, brown paper. Is that correct? Um, as as instead of the uh, weed barrier uh, fabric, and it biodegrades and it works uh, just fine. Um, the the reason we we don't have that is because it does biodegrade, and if um, during the uh, um, 
you know, establishment period, we don't want those weeds to, to overtake, or um, sorry, the grass to overtake those plant beds. But then uh, the second half of the question. Oh, that's that's that that was it. So uh, for uh, for under when I say under uh, the the gravel and mulch hardscape areas, uh, gravel um, we're looking at like p gravel paths that you have through the landscape. Uh, you, you obviously don't want uh, those paths to be overtaken by by uh, weeds or grass. And then mulch hardscape. Those are like uh, basically areas that do not have plants in it, like tree rings and, and uh, maybe larger areas. There is still a 50% plant cover um, um, requirement on there. So you can't have your whole yard just mulch. You have to have at least some plants in there. But in, I know that some areas you just, you, you're not going to be able to grow anything. So you, you, do, you want large uh, mulch areas. So that would be something that we, we would ask you to put some weed um, barrier fabric on there. It's not required. No, not in the fully planted areas. Yes. Um, there's no, there's no requirements on that. We just want to make sure. I mean, so if it's a design decision on you, on your end. Uh, just think about the maintenance on that. Uh, that, that I'm sorry. Let me re repeat the question. How, that was how um, um, lo low does that weed barrier fabric need to be for gravel areas? And basically, we're not looking at any type of uh, height requirement. Thirty-five dollars for every hundred square foot is the is the rebate. It, 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 yeah, it ends up being it, well. If you work the math, it's thirty-five cents a square foot. So, yeah. Yes. Uh, are there any requirements uh, versus renters and home? Yeah, um, versus homeowners. Uh, basically, our application has uh, uh, the water count holder. And if the water account holder is a renter, then they have to get approval from the owner to, for them to get this rebate. All right, I'm going to go forward. Yes. Is there any restriction on a multifamily, a fourplex, duplex? Um, basically, what we're looking at is um, what we call, what we consider residential is a fourplex and below. Uh, if he starts going into a higher condo, we actually have a separate program. Uh, it's called multifamily HOA um, and water-wise landscape rebate, and they will be able to get. I'm trying to up that to right now. It's at twenty-five dollars for hundred square feet, but I'm trying to up that as well. Um, was there another question? Okay. Um, automatic systems um, must be capped off. Um, we. Uh, with this program, I thought it was just going to be basically just for automatic uh, system owners only, like they do in California. But um, our um, basically our, our, our city council and, and other subgroups said that they wanted this program available to everybody, so even hose and sprinkler users can get into this program. Uh, but if you do have an automatic irrigation system, it must be capped off or converted to drip within the conversion area. Um, so that was, that's a requirement. And there's no water features that, uh, that, you can have a water feature, but it will not count in the square footage. And like I said before, no gravel area is greater than three feet in width. What, we're, what we were having an issue with is that, you see that photo there, is with these torrential downpours, uh, people putting DG out there and it's just going to our streets. And you saw this, you know, a couple months ago, the whole, every street was filled with, with little gravel, especially in my section of town, which is right there in Terrytown. Uh, I, thought, I, thought, I thought they had paved roads, but it was just the, uh, the gravel that was coming off their yards. All right, the, now I'm going uh, to talk about our brand new program. Uh, you to have five minutes. Um, this is brand new, so it's, it, I don't have that much information uh, because I don't have that many questions. Hopefully, some of the questions you have for me right now, I can uh, f um, place into the frequently asked questions. Um, what, what we've had is uh, basically a big, big, uh, I guess, request to have a program that promotes uh, rain, uh, rainscapes, including rain gardens. And so um, homeowners and schools 
um, and I'm not talking just AISD, but any school that's receiving um, Austin water are eligible to get a 30 cents a square foot. Now, this one is per square foot. So if you have a 100, 101 square feet, foot uh, rainscape, you will get, um, what is that, $30.30 or, or something to that effect. Um, uh, for installing uh, um, anything as uh, far as a rain garden, uh, doing a, a berm or a swale that, that, that shows that there is uh, water retention, um, terraces, and, and even if you were to use a porous pavement to divert that rainwater from your roof and, and make sure that it infiltrates, uh, in, in even infiltration trenches, uh, on on their property, and, and that's just a. I just put a little photo of a, a rain garden there, and you can see how the uh, water's coming off the roof, going down into the rain gutter, and into this uh, section of your yard. Uh, it is uh, basically uh, there, and, and the trees can uh, can actually get uh, benefit from there if it's close to trees. But uh, definitely, w the reason we have this rebate is that we're hoping that people don't water these areas that they survive on the amount of rainfall that we get each year. Uh, same type of eligibility, uh, you still need to go through a pre-approval process. Uh, the minimum size of the conversion area is now 100 square feet, so that's smaller than the previous um, uh, program. And uh, um, I think there's, no, and that's, and that's basically it. So right now I just have some photos of, of rain gardens. You can have a rain garden close to your home, uh, as uh, the picture to, to your right, and then the picture to the left, you can see how they did a little rain garden way away from the home where the, you can see the water coming off the, the turf grass and on, into that um, depression there. Yes, ma'am. Good question. Is, is the uh, healthy lawn rule applicable here? Uh, no. If you have a, a desert in, or weeds and dirt, you can still get into this program. Uh, we, like uh, Betty was talking about earlier, with berms and swales, uh, just directing your uh, downspout. Um, to the left, you see how a berm would collect all that water, and then you would have different types of plants, obviously, that, that can uh, sur um, survive with uh, the amount of rainfall there. And then to the right, you can see a swale that we're just catching it, and then uh, it's infiltrating so that that tree right in the background can get some of that uh, b benefit of the water that's uh, infiltrating. Water, uh, rainwater terracing. Uh, I would. This is what I'm assuming it would look like. If somebody comes in with a plan that looks totally different, I'll have to just analyze it and look at it. This is the first year for the program, so I'm sure there's going to be a lot of um, oddballs or stuff like that. But I'm going to make sure that uh, it's it does work before approving it. So there's two examples of rainwater terracing um, going away from the house and to the side of the house. Uh, porous pavement and infiltration. Uh, that top photo, you can see how the rain gutter is basically um, just spewing out into the porous pavement that's there, that's used for the driveway. And then the, we also have infiltration trenches. Now, infiltration trenches are going to be a little deeper and are probably going to be better for uh, trees if you can get them close to the to, to their root zone. Um, this one that I have in is, as an example, basically, uh, they must have an issue with the drainage there, so they wanted to try to get that water out from that area as, 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 uh, as soon as possible so that they um, dug it a little deeper. And that's basically it. I just wanted to fill up a couple of minutes there. Question? Yeah, as far as the requirements for this rainscape versus the water-wise, we do ask a lot for the the, the water. Uh, sorry, the landscape one. The rainscape one will we basically will just requ require um, photos of where you're going to be installing it. Um, you don't need any photos of the current um, uh, grass health, but you need an application and a site plan showing the the measurements so that I know how how large it's going to be. 
Oh, uh, um, after you're approved, then you're able to do the um, installation. At the very end, we'll do a post inspection. With post inspection, sorry. Right. It's not. This program is not retroactive. So if somebody already has one of these, uh, they will not be eligible for a rebate. I think that's it. Any other questions?